Okay, maybe I didn't decide to go to bed, but I'm making the third video of my busy series. And I may be, you know, strangling off here and there and making rough turns and delights. Um, but I'm trying to stay on course as best I can. Um, but this video will talk basically about how, what one should do when shieldings fail. Because I quite on, you know, I quite frequently get that question and it's not, because it is a reality and it isn't safe to not have a shield up. And it, it becomes a problem after a while too. So, we have our basic visualization techniques. We meditate, we clear our chakras, we ground and center. Grounding and centering is most important, especially for an empath, because what you want to do, is in the case when you're doing a reading, is that you want to accept it in, but you also want a route for it out, an outlet. And without it, it's equivalent to doing a ritual and not grounding the excess energy, it just stays with you, and it usually comes out in a very negative form. Um, and it may stay with you for a while, giving the impression that perhaps you might be in a state of depression or bipolar disorder. That's where one usually gets confused on that level. So, grounding and centering is incredibly important, I'm just going to say that first. Uh, but when shielding doesn't seem to be doing enough, you still get those bleeding messages. And if you really, quite honestly, don't want it, um, it is your will to banish it. And they say, and they teach this even to the clairvoyants who see spirits. If you don't want them around, you need to make it known when they are welcome and when they are not welcome. The same kind of applies because, uh, it is up to you whether you want to accept that message or not. It is, you know, your choice. Um, for example, I mean, I'm, I'm working on this too, except I get to a point where I I lose the entire gift for a while altogether. It's like seasonal. And then it comes back, and uh, the more I use it, the more I exercise it, for example, the more adapt it becomes. Um, and within the exercising it, I mean, I'm, I'll get to that later. Um, when shields don't work, sorry, it's like I said, I'm trying to stay on topic here. Um, many things you can do, you can do it on a physical realm. Many people make their shields using incense um, or using stones, or herbal, herbal mixes, teas, uh, potions, and concoctions. And these may work for you. So, I mean, I do do um, fully, you know, suggest that you get into to checking that out if you have that problem. Um, one major stone that I had to buy, majorly, because I had a problem with grounding so much, like, I could do my, my basic morning visual, excuse me, my back hurts, visualizations, meditation, shieldings, and groundings. However, when I would go to an overly crowded you know, massive amounts of energy, I can't get it out. And the, uh, quite honestly, the one place that I can't stand to go into because I have this problem is the Spencer store. And I, you know, for the longest time, I didn't know why, and then it occurs to me I get the sexual energy from all the sex crap in the store. Um, but anyway, I'm just as an example. Uh, well, one stone I had to buy, for example, was hematite. And hematite is a beautiful stone. Um, you can wear it as a pendant, and it looks just, you know, it's obvious, it's just basic pendant, there's nothing about it. You can hide, you can stay in a room closet if you wish to wear it. Um, but what it does, it helps to ground you. You can even feel it as you hold it and embrace it. It just kind of like relaxes you and sets you into the ground. And it really does help. And I suggest if you have a very big problem with this, you need to carry the stone with you. Um, especially if shielding is a problem, because at least, at least you have the way of getting rid of it. Maybe not instantly, but you have the ability to get rid of it. Um, like I said, you could use special scents from herbal mixes. You can use those in potions where you would wear. Obviously, you wouldn't drink um, unless you 
or well into that you know how to make the concoctions. I don't, but um, you wear them and it protrudes out the end. It uh, blocks out all energies negative and positive but ultimately like I said before it is your decision whether you want to let it enter you or not and it's hard to, to wrap your mind around I understand because trust me I was told the same thing uh, so it was not my choice I just kept, I just pick it up yes and no you have the ability to say basically talk to the hand you're psychically saying talk to the hand you're not there choose not to accept this message, return the sender. Um, so you have that option whether you believe it or not, it's just you have to have the willpower and confidence to know that you can do it. Um, and there's one, there's one anecdote that I've been told several times in tradition of Wicca is that any problem in this world will only be your problem unless you allow it to be your problem. And it's generally been spawned off the idea that you help others in spell work, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, or whatever. Um, but it, it does apply here too because. Um, that's my train of mind again. I. Anyway. <laughs> it does apply. So empathy too, like I'm saying, like you choose to, to allow it in every <laughs> back on track. Um, I just keep watching the time down here, making sure I'm not going too much over for you, uh, which I am anyway. So, um, but like I said, I think I'm really am done for the night, though. I will do more videos on how to make a specific shield for empaths and a. And talking about empathic exercise. Um, but for now, y'all have a good night, and for real this time, <laughs> and um, have a safe and magical sleep. Bye, everybody.